Good evening. I'd like to call the Monday, December 4th, 2023 Bruins Select Board to or, uh, meeting to order. With us tonight, to my left, is Flo Smith, Joe Staub. To my right is Tor Nelson and Carla Nuizel. I'm Brad Town. And additions or changes to the agenda tour? I have none. Uh, public comment. Hearing none, moving on to Geary. Geary, yes. Geary, uh, Montpelier Inc., tax stabilization agreement, application and project briefing. So I'd like to first introduce Geary Hotels. Uh, we are a Bra uh, Braintree, Mass., which is about 10 miles south of Boston. Uh, Geary has about 50 hotels, just under. Uh, we are focused entirely in New England. Um, we own the Comfort Suites here. Um, we're working on uh, a project. We're acquiring a couple hotels in White River, and we're also working on a new construction in Burlington. Uh, in terms of Vermont, we're also looking at something in Rutland. But we're throughout New England. Uh, we have 15 different brands, so we're not brand loyal. We're brand diverse. Um, there were privately held. There are four partners, of which Encore Patel is a partner. Um, and we're long-term holders. We're not flippers. We like to come into a market and uh, either acquire or build and stay there for a long time. Um, my background, I spent 30-plus uh, years working for a small hotel company called Hilton. Um, you may have heard of us. Um, I did development for Hilton in my tenure with them, well over 400 projects. Uh, when pandemic came, Hilton uh, did some scaling down, cut 25% of the workforce and volunteered me. I had done some hotel projects with Anker and his partner Ash, some Hampton Inns, some Home Choose, and they called and said they thought they could use somebody with my skills, and so I've been working with them about a year and a half, helping them on uh, their new development projects. Um, we own the Comfort Suite, which we acquired, um, and we looked at the opportunity of this being an underserved market. I, I uh, know the market fairly well. I actually did the Capitol Plaza when it transitioned to a tapestry. Um, that was one of my projects. Um, you know, the market needs more hotel rooms, and I'm sure you'd rather see them in the town of Berlin than in Montpelier, because it's better for your tax base. You know, we looked at our comfort suites, and we said we have this parcel out front, and it, it makes sense to put a second hotel there. Um, we have had uh, conversations with Hilton to build a home two suites, which is um, an extended stay product. It's Hilton's most popular product today. Uh, there's one that just opened in Burlington if you wanted to see a live in person. Um, the developers up there, it's been opened uh, for about two years and it's done extremely well. They're building a second hotel next to it because they said, well, we've done so well, we should put a second hotel in the market. Um, Where is that located? It's located in South Burlington. Um, it's, uh, do you know where the Starbucks is? Uh, what's it? I'm just curious if it was in downtown or if it was in no, South Burlington. No, it's South Burlington. Burlington. Yeah. It's in Williston behind the new L.L. Bean. Okay, yeah. There? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's mm -hmm. Williston, not South, South Burlington. The line's right there. It's right, yeah, it's right at that line. And, and so we know that product works well. It's done extremely well up there. Um, you know, it's one of, as I said, Hilton's most popular products, and we think it fits well into this market. Um, it's, it gives a guest a little bit more space in the room. It's a really efficient product in terms of design, and it does not have a restaurant or a bar, so most municipalities like it. Um, we've had some conversations with Applebee's to try and increase the traffic, uh, pedestrian traffic um, between the two. And uh, so We've applied for the tax stabilization agreement, which I believe now needs to be approved by this board. Um, but we did start that process, and uh, John's going to speak a little bit more about the details of the project, unless you guys have any questions for me. Not at this time. Thank you. And you did receive approval for the Economic Development Committee for your tax stabilization request. Yes. 
Um, hello, my name is John Grenier. Um, pleasure to be here tonight. The, the land that they would like to develop, they already own. It is the parking lot in front of the current Comfort Inn and next to the Applebee's, which is very functional, gives up great space for their customers, people that are using Applebee's, but it doesn't really provide a streetscape that you all are looking for in the town of Berlin with your new zoning. Um, something more walkable, something that like looks a little bit nicer from the front, and moving the parking to rear of buildings seems to be the way people are going now. It's just a lot better looking product. Um, so what we need to do to do that is acquire some land from the town of Berlin, which sits directly behind the existing Comfort Inn. It's part of your um, town, it's off this parcel actually, it's part of the town highway garage land. Um, the map that's in front of you that has an orange rectangle around it is about the 1.5 acres we're looking at. Um, it's currently partially wooded and the rest is kind of a turnaround for the uh, highway vehicles. And there's a, I believe, sand storage pile there. Um, if you look at it, it looks like there's plenty of room to relocate that sand storage pile to either closer to the building or farther to the west. Um, so acquiring this land wouldn't really disrupt the town's use of the highway garage, the highway um, infrastructure, and the storage facilities you have. Um, the land in front of the Comfort Inn that we would be building the hotel on is 1.2 acres. And the reason we're asking for a little bit larger space behind the Comfort Inn is because with new uh, construction of impervious surfaces, you need stormwater treatment. There is some stormwater treatment around the existing Comfort Inn, but the parking lot isn't really treated. It just kind of goes directly into the municipal infrastructure and then you know, discharges into bodies of water downstream. Uh, so we would be basically taking that parking lot, putting it behind the Comfort Inn where it's still accessible for not only the Comfort Inn, but a new hotel, um, and then building a new building right along Payne Turnpike. Uh, building would have a beautiful streetscape. We've included some possibilities of what this hotel would look like. Um, they're there in the center of the island. Um, obviously, if the project moves forward, we would be presenting to the Development Review Board the exact color, height, width, landscaping, and all of such. But we want to give you folks a couple of ideas of what these buildings do look like. Um, uh, we would be putting street trees in front of the building, a new sidewalk in front of the building, um, and basically creating a streetscape that doesn't currently exist. Uh, we think it's a really good tie-in with a restaurant. It's already existing restaurant next door, as Karen said. This, this product does not have its own restaurant and bar. So you're not really competing with the guy who's been working really hard on his own restaurant. Um, and yeah, currently they're looking at somewhere in the vicinity of around 100 rooms. It would have a majority of the parking it needed around the building. So it's not that you have to park in the far back parking lot to use either hotel. There's still parking around the building. It's with overflow, large trucks, or if you have an event in town where every single room is full, some people will be parking in that rear parking lot. Um, so, yeah. So actually, you know, Tom brought this idea to us as we were talking about reconfiguring some parking at the Comfort Inn and it made a lot of sense and so we've been drawn into this conversation with you folks and want to present a really good project and um, like I said they've applied for tax stabilization as well approved we would hope that you would approve it as well and if there's any questions about what we're thinking or why the layout is what it is I'm happy to try to answer any I guess my first question is access, you know, this proposed rear parking lot, where would the access to that be from? If you look at the, the site plan that I provided, I think you have one printed out. We would create kind of a new boulevard that would access both hotels. You'd be driving basically down the south edge of the property, um, right next to that large stormwater pond that's there. So you would pull in that large boulevard, nice street trees, lighting. Um, just kind of make a nice entrance. You'd pull into the first Home Two Suites Hotel, have access to that whole property, or you would keep going and pull into the Comfort Inn and stay there. 
if you were going to park in the rear of the building, you would drive right by the southern end of the Comfort Inn and access a large parking lot behind the Comfort Inn. And there's talk about trying to provide access from the back of the building. Who would do some renovation at the Comfort Suites so that you could come in from the back side? Um, at one point, there was talk of adding rooms to the back of the comfort and kind of where the 90 degree turn is, yeah. making it kind of more of, I guess, like a T instead of a L. Is yeah, I'll just speak to that quickly. That's sort of, um, you know, when we acquired the property, um, Uncle Patel, Geary Hotels, um, but when we acquired the property, um, you know, we were kind of thinking about doing an expansion. Um, and um, after you know, the, after working with the town on the tax stabilization and then talking to Tom and then yourself as well, there's, there's a new opportunity for the hotel sort of presented itself. So um, we haven't we we would like to do the extension for the Comfort Inn potentially at the rear of the property um, instead of the front as proposed. But that's still it's still a it, it's still um, I think we would try to look at the whole project. With the hotel and the expansion, um, and uh, and develop both both pieces over time. Mm -hmm. So you're still considering. You're yep. still, yeah. Yeah. Maybe a stage two or yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. a phased approach. But you know, now the our t our immediate attention would be on the new the the new hotel, and then but as we you know um, if we if we can have an agreement to purchase the the land, you know, then we would look at kind of having a phase two yep. approach on the extension. An expansion there as well. <coughs> so in all, in all, it would be roughly. Uh, I think we last we looked at it, it would be in the neighborhood of about 100 and 135 rooms. So 35 room expansion for the Comfort Inn and about 100 rooms in the neighborhood. Nice. What's the What's the typical clientele? And what's the average stay in the mm -hmm. longer stay? So. I happened to be at Hilton when they developed the product, and the original intention was to be five plus nights for 60% of the business. That's not what's happened. Okay. It's become a very transient hotel. People like it. It's it's a modern feel. Um, I'd say the average. I'm guessing, but I'd say it's probably 1.6, 1.7 is the average wow. length of stay. But it's an oversized guest yeah. room, and so it attracts. People just like the extra space yep. in the room. It's it's uh, everybody's trying to copy that as other hotel companies. You know, Marriott's got a product going at you know because home two has become a dominant force. But it's you know the room's kind of divided into three parts: the the sleeping space, the living space, and then the bathroom. Yep. Um, and there's like they don't have kitchens, but they have um, you know not hot plates. Uh, what's it uh, Well, countertop. Uh, well, they're no. isn't yeah, yeah, induction. Okay. Induction, sorry, right. yeah, sorry. Induction. Yeah. You know, so that yep. people can yep. heat up soup yep. or, you know, something like that. But they're not really cooking in the rooms. Yep. You don't control that. We don't, but it's an induction <laughs> plate, not. Yeah. Our company. Yeah. Um, so we've developed. Uh, we've developed uh, a couple of these. We have another three. Uh, we have. Uh, one going into construction, we have another three in in, uh, in permitting, actually. So uh, we're pretty comfortable with the, uh, you know, with the product. Uh, we just opened up one in Bangor, Maine. Um, so, um, like like Karen said, we're seeing in our in our business, anyways, that there is like um, you know short term, uh, short, short more on the short term side. And certainly, there are some people who stay like you know five nights, whether yeah. maybe for construction yeah. or something like yeah. that. That's really what it's, what it's used for. Um, but yeah, that's what we see too. Is just uh, more of a more of a two night type stay. Um, speaking from my experience with my family, we use it all. We use home twos a lot because um, it's just easier to um, you know you get the counter space to make like mac and cheese and yeah. stuff like that with yeah. kids. So, so. And I have a 27 year old who loves it because it's modern and it's, you know, the color schemes, you know, that younger generation really likes. It does well with like visiting nurses yep. and that kind of stuff that people just want more space. Mm -hmm. uh, and rate wise, it's positioned, it was supposed to be below Hampton Inn, but it's actually performing above Hampton Inn. 
sounds good. So they have applied for the tax stabilization. Um, information is in your packet, uh, five-year agreement. Um, the Economic Development Council looked at this back in, I think it was October, wasn't it? And approved it. Um, July. How many stories? To be uh, determined or like yeah. Depending on the footprint and parking spaces and room count. Like they if you look at the pictures, there's a variety. There's everywhere yeah. from three to five stories. It's kind of the average for this size area. That's no, that sounds right. It, what really drives the development is the number of rooms. And so uh, being a hundred being where most of the time we see we see the uh, the value. Being built. So we need to be around 100 rooms. Whether it comes through four or five stories, it just depends on working with the civil engineers and figuring out how to figure out traffic flow. And yeah, and meeting the height requirements of the building, obviously. Yeah. That will be your tallest building in Berlin. Even at four say, stories? I wouldn't say. Five stories. Be taller oh, five than stories. Five. I was just thinking, yeah. would it be taller than a hospital? I'd say it would be comparable to the tallest part of the hospital or lower. So we have to meet zoning, so whatever. Yeah, so the site's also low. You know, if you look at where it is today versus the comfort, the comfort is significantly higher. It's yeah. even though it's only uh, three stories, it's going to look because it sits high up. And this is you know, the site's well. Yeah. The topography of the site does allow us to kind of quote, bury the back part of the building. And I think so, I think it could look nice with paint turned by below, kind of step up to the first building, step up to the next building, yeah. kind of follow your way up versus just building next to building yeah. next to building on the same flat mm -hmm. trajectory. That's what we try to do. So the requirements of the tax stabilization is that the amount invested uh, should be at least 25% of the assessed value or fair market value, which we feel that this would meet. Uh, the amount invested should be at least 200000 which of course uh, it would be. Um, of course, we fully compliant with all zoning, building codes, plumbing codes, ADA, <laughs> everything like that. Um, the applicant has access to the capital necessary to complete the project as presented. Yes. Sure that it does. Okay. Uh, the project is consistent with the town plan and the economic development plan. Uh, Tom and Carla, I'll refer to you on that. Definitely the town plan. Yep. Okay. Uh, the applicant is in good standing with the Vermont Department, Tax Department, and IRS. Yeah, okay. um, yes. <laughs> so I know Carl and Joe, this, the tax stabilization is new to you, Brad, and Flo, you've been through it before on the board. So, motion on the tax stabilization. Approve. And I'll second. Any further discussion? Out of curiosity, um, how important to this project is the parking lot on the town land? I don't think we would need zoning. Uh, yeah. it's per, it, it can't happen without it. Okay. <clears throat> do we, when the town, did the town purchase this land or did, was it gifted? That I'd have to look. That would be important to know. Yeah. Because if it's been donated, there may be restrictions on it. Correct. And you need to take and find that out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'll be pertinent. Mm -hmm. so, not that I'm opposed to the project. Right. Just, just to be absolutely <coughs> certain. Yeah. Any other discussion on this? Yeah. So Any? would we have to determine um, the town property prior to this? 
Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you for the thorough presentation. Very much welcome. appreciate it. Sure. I appreciate the tax stabilization question. Beyond the donation, do you have any other questions that haven't been answered here or any that popped up tonight? Regarding right. I just thought of that when I was. No, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good point. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> no, sounds like a good outcome. I, I was just sad. I, I just saw the drawings today that um, the parking lot had some surface uh, stormwater. Yep. Treatment. I would suggest if, that John, when you're doing your analysis, if you could look at maybe putting this under the parking lot, that may lower the, the amount of acreage that it would, it would require. So just yeah, I have that seed. That's a complete. Um, that's totally driven by the soil site yes. and design. So yep. like, we I guess probably just kind of balance the space that's needed on the surface with underground storage as well. Um, I'll have, we'll, if we get that far, we will be digging test pits, soil borings, and all that stuff to determine what is the best stormwater treatment and what the state of Vermont would allow. You know, they'll ultimately pass the project through stormwater regulations and I have to meet those. So we will, that will drive the design, but all options are on the table. Yeah. Uh, Matt, you have something to say? <clears throat> yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, Best case scenario, when does this open? I'm just going to ask that. <laughs> uh, well, um, morning is hard to predict. Yeah, it's really hard. So there's, assuming, I'm trying to think here. So, so January we, 1, right? Assuming we have permitting in June. June, then you do Act 250, which is six, maybe six months there. Yeah, like, I, I would say that as soon as the ownership group felt comfortable spending money on the design and the permitting and stuff it would be a year yeah. Yeah. so the town of berlin and the ownership group decides that yes you know we have a purchase and sale agreement for this land contingent on permitting and etc that that day that we start that it's a year to hold. it's a year for permitting and <coughs> permitting a year to okay. construct uh, 18 months usually we budget okay considering site work and stuff like so that so two ish years from today yeah. two two and a half years did you get that matt okay <laughs> thumbs up giving us a thumbs up okay. any other questions for these folks no sounds good exciting i think i've seen one of these home twos off of uh I-90 in suburban Buffalo. Oh, yeah. It looked yes. really nice. I did that one, too. And, okay. It's in Amherst. Okay. Uh, right it's all, off, it's right. all Buffalo to me, but... Yeah. No, it's right, <laughs> off, right off of 90. Yes, yeah. yes. It's done very well. Yeah. It's, well it's a great product. Congratulations. It, uh, well, I don't work for them anymore, right. but I've done a bunch of them. Very familiar with it. We appreciate you all. Thank yeah. you. Thank Thank you. you. If Thanks. I could ask a Mr. Grinier, any update on Richardson Road? Yeah, we're uh, working with the uh, contact to get an updated price on the actual cost of the culvert. Okay. And I'm working on making sure that it still fits in as originally designed. So I think I'll have something to you in like a couple months. All right. Cool. All right. Very nice. So right. in terms of next steps, you guys will research um to figure out if the land if yep. it was donated right. if there's any restrictions and yeah. be done this week. great and then the next step would be to start talking about what the value would be mm -hmm. great. great thank, thank you, you. Well, thank you. <laughs> enjoy your Very evening much. yeah for being so efficient <laughs> well, thank you. thanks thank you karen thanks tom thank you all have a good evening thank you. good night I'm like, you guys, you don't think you need them. You don't need them. Save one. travel. I don't need mine. Okay. Uh, Police Department, copy your maintenance contract. 
so um, the federal government and the Vermont Department of Public Safety have security data protocols that need to be followed by local governments and they do audits on government entities including the police department to to verify compliance with those requirements um, so they're in, they're in the middle of a audit with the police department right now um, and identified a couple of um, areas of concern that they have uh, the first is the contracts need to have um, basically security addendums in place um, you know, which is just additions to the contracts and they agree to follow all of these uh, requirements and regulations and everything like that uh, the second is that the technicians need to have background checks and take security awareness training and testing uh, to be allowed unescorted access uh, to the police department, their systems and devices, uh, including the copier. Um, this is in place for, for everybody. Our, our, you know, our, our cleaning people need to have these background checks. Uh, our network people need to have these background checks and stuff. Our VTAC, they, they need to go through this. Uh, area we didn't think about was the photocopiers because they're, you know, they've got you know, they're basically a computer than, in a, themselves nowadays. Yeah. Um, so uh, our current uh, contractor, which is uh, Visual Edge IT, um, they have bought out uh, OSV Office Systems of Vermont, uh, have been approached about these two requirements and have uh, been less than... Uh, welcoming in getting these items in place, um, both as far as the contract addendums and having the uh, technicians take this training. Uh, there has been some movement that they are now looking at the uh, addendums and possibly identified one technician to take the training, but it is not in place yet. E neither of those items are in place yet. Um, it's it's something we're getting pressed on by the state and we're needing to ask for waivers uh, and so forth from the state to to you know allow this to happen um, but after several months you know we still don't have these things in place which the you know this awareness training is it's relatively simple and straightforward it's common sense if you see your buddy's name on the uh, wanted poster in the hall where you don't go broadcast it to them or anything like that. I mean, it's common sense stuff, but they're refusing to take, they've taken the background check, um, but they're not taking, you know, the soy test and they're wasting more time than if they would have just taken it and gotten done with already. So I'm looking as the town administrator for authorization to cancel the contract if they do not in reasonable time get these items completed. In the contract, how much notice do they need? I believe it's 60 days. Even if there's a like a for cause kind of thing? Right. But we'll yeah. worry about that when we get to it. And also... Um, they, they uh, if, By the way, they were all invited, uh, both locally and national, as well as the uh, actual owner of the, con of the copier, um, the Lage, um, none of them have um, bothered to show up tonight. Have you been able to locate a vendor that will meet the requirements? Not yet, but I've got several in mind that I'm checking on. How often do they show? Do they come here regularly? The copier people? Yeah. No, it's it's very uh, rare, um, but you, you know they do. They have remote access. On. Yeah. Right. Well, that's that's kind okay. of nice. yeah, that's kind of. So they're always here, or well, could always be. Right. This, uh, this technology is scary. I mean, the the unescorted access, that point is not really an issue. I mean, if we need to, if we need to babysit them, we can we can do that. We can charge them one hundred fifty dollars an hour. 
you know, just like we charged, uh, you know, sitting on uh, on the interstate for uh, for the paving projects. I mean, you know, we can we can bill them for contract work just like that, but it's it's the uh, remote access and stuff, which is yeah. one of the biggest concerns. How far into the current contract are we? Uh, eight months. Is it new or were they? It's very new, yeah. So the, who was doing it before? Well, it's still the same company. It's just oh, a new, new, uh, new, okay. new, new copier that was just installed. Yeah. When does this when does this contract run out? Uh, five years. Five years. Twenty twenty eight. Is there any fees associated with the cancellation? No. Well, I would say take and and find a new copier group and. Get a bid from them, or two or three bids if you can find them. And I hate taking, not have a replacement if I want to take and cancel right. this contract. Does the state recommend? Who, I mean, I'm just wondering who the state. Oh, I've got I've got the list from the oh, state okay. of their contractors, and um, we'll take a look at that. Thank you, Tour. Sound please okay. with me. Okay. Uh, anything else on this? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, FY twenty. I guess. I guess. Best case scenario, they take the training and yeah. send them the stuff, and it can be done within twenty four hours or thirty six hours. I mean, it's not a huge lift here, but they've yeah. been hesitant but, in doing it so far. But so. it's concerning that they're not willing to be cooperative. All right. Mm. So this is not a, just a state requirement. This is. Also a federal requirement? Correct. And, uh, through the and, FBI, NCIC. Right. And so if they're not meeting, I think in the contract, if they're not meeting these requirements, we still have to give them 60 days? Yeah, because looking at, I mean, I, you know, I, I haven't sent the contract to the attorney yet, but um, I don't really see anything in there where we stipulated you need to follow these procedures and protocols and stuff. Which is probably a weakness when we. Because we're not going to wait 60 days before we, I guess, have a new contract with a new vendor sitting on the table. Right. Right? No. And if, I would almost say if they're going to be pushing, pushing the envelope here, I think regardless, in 60 days, I would send them. Send them walking. And just have oh, a I'm not waiting 60 days. And have a different oh, vendor right. already. Well, right. right, you're just on me. We can't get out of it until for well, another 60 you just days. Pay on the 60 days, okay. and yeah. you don't have to. Keep you know, it. this time next week, if we have another mm -hmm. vendor in place. Well, I got. Well, I've got some other ideas in mind. Yeah. To restrict access and stuff. Anything else on this? Mm -hmm. uh, FY25. Budget discussion, police department. So you have several documents in your packet. Uh, probably the main one we'll be looking at is the uh, spreadsheet. Um, and the far right column. Is the proposed, or at this point, I don't say proposed, but the draft FY25 budget. Um, police full time wages, uh, night shift wages, um, clerical. Uh, those are all uh, based on the union contract. Uh, Part-time, the chief is not requesting a increase. Uh, overtime, uh, we are looking, uh, we're, we're looking uh, at a small increase over the current year, but more in line with uh, what we had in previous years. 
um, on call we're looking at level funding, education looking at level funding, longevity looking at level funding, uh, workers comp, uh, we're looking at an increase based on the um, projected rates. Uh, health insurance again looking at <coughs> increase based on the uh, projected rates. Uh, of course with uh, increase in wages the uh, FICA goes up a proportionate amount. Uh, disability insurance not looking for an increase there. Uh, life insurance looking at a small increase there. Uh, the buyback, health insurance buyback, not looking at any increase. Same with the uh, gym memberships. Uh, pension looking at a small increase, of course that's based on your uh, wages as well. Uh, the insurance is taking quite a bit of an increase, just looking at those numbers today from, from the league. Um, including the liability and the automobile uh, insurance. And that's, uh, and you should see as we in the future weeks, as we get further into the budget, uh, that's increased in all areas as well. Why is such a significant increase on that, do you know? I don't know, I haven't yeah, delved into the- The insurance? Yeah. yeah. I think everything's just going up. I'm yeah, looking at a 14% increase with my help. Insurance. That's a 50% increase. Close to it, yeah. <clears throat> um, supplies. Uh, small increase there. Uh, uniforms looking at the same amount. Guns and ammo. Um, looking at an increase there now. Um, one of the things that Chief is requesting, so basically they do the firearms qualification once a year, which is the bare minimum. Um, that's allowed, um, but in reality that's not enough. Um, so he's looking for to increase that frequency and, and do more things like uh, nighttime training and things like that. Um, more scenario based shootings and, and things like that. Uh, so that's the increase there. Uh, cameras and computers looking for an increase there and that is really to start building a reserve uh, for you know when we do replace the computers we're not just pulling out of one year mm -hmm. we're funding a little bit each year yeah, yeah. Um, copier lease I did increase it a little bit in case we do have to go with somebody else um, equipment looking at level funded uh, uniform allowance looking at level funded, uh, administrative expensive, the media, uh, the Vibers database uh, looking at level funded, uh, media and data is increasing, uh, the other three, the advertising training and telephone are the same. Uh, next page, um, legal is the same. Uh, maintenance, we're increasing a little bit just because everything, you know, the general rate of inflation. Same with uh, gas and oil. Um, you know, that's all over the place. Uh, special investigative unit, that is the um, Our House, uh, One Unified Response in Barrie, that remains the same. Uh, same with the community fund and other equipment. And then on the last page is 
um, the capital um, budgeting section of the, of the budget. Uh, the chief is requesting a new cruiser um, next year. Uh, and I included his request in the, uh, in the packet. Uh, $56,000 uh, for that. Um, we do have money <coughs> set aside in ARPA for that. Uh, so I recommend we use that. And then also um, another $6,000 to be reserved for body cameras. We're here again, we just purchased them in, uh, in June. And instead of purchasing the whole amount in one yeah. year, start reserving amounts each year uh, for that replacement. Well, so they get they get replaced every year. Body they cameras? generally replace one vehicle. No, I'm talking about the body cameras. Oh no, uh, oh, well, three like, to five years. Sure. Okay, I was gonna yeah. say three to four anyway. Yeah. Hmm. And on the vehicle tour, you said fifty-six thousand, but this says fifty-two to fifty-four. Is it still the fifty-two to fifty-four range for the replacement of the? I would. I would. Um, I bumped it up a little bit oh, just I because see. everything else is getting more expensive and. Mm -hmm. Uh, wasn't easy finding this last vehicle that we bought. I think we had to buy it out of Massachusetts, actually. Good point. So, and so then when you get into lights, you get into radio installing, all that. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. That might just make it. Mm So the bad news is, uh, looking at everything, uh, we're looking at $1.58 million for the police budget versus a 1.45 budget. Well, I've not done the math to see what percent of an increase that is. Mm -hmm. And my, t my eyes are turning some to the actuals. You know, what we have in existence for actuals compared to um, keep in mind with the actual, some of those are distorted because of the new police contract. There was a lot of back, back pay or whatever you call it. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Residual. Charged in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's good. They do have down that the body camera replacement is times six within the next year. I thought it didn't know, I didn't know when they had gotten them. I was thinking you said they just got them, so I thought, wow, they didn't. <coughs> Anything else on this tour? No, uh, no, sir. Okay, uh, chatter change discussion, outreach decision, local option tax. So a copy of the uh, current charter is in um, your packet. Um, we've been talking for several meetings about the local options tax, and I think we are all in agreement in pursuing that in March. You want to pursue on sales? meals and rooms and alcohol. 
but looking at some other provisions in here, on the top of the second page, it's under section 32, powers of the town, under paragraph B, and kind of timely with um, tonight's prior discussion. Um, currently, we in, in our charter, um, to for the town to sell land, uh, we need to take it to a uh, town meeting vote. Um, that is above and beyond what is required by state statute. And um, my recommendation is we take that out and just put it in um, the same process that is for um, state statute. That it would fall, you know, the authority would fall to the select board and um, based on petition, it, you know, the, the sale could be petitioned for a time of vote, yeah. but not okay. automatically go to it. Mm -hmm. Understood. Uh, the second is on page three of six under appointed town officers, uh, town administrator, and assistant town administrator. Uh, I mentioned before, it might be time to start thinking about a town manager versus town administrator. I agree. And then the last area under uh, page five, under governance, governance uh, 91, section C, the sole and exclusive body to make decisions relating to statewide or national interest is by the voters at a town meeting. I think take that off. I think um, where things are going, we, you know, we need, select board needs to have the ability to um, weigh in on these types of issues without a town meeting. Um, I know this has come up in the past and we've not been able to take action um, to the extent we would like to have. I'm not looking for a decision that just uh, wanted to... What's the process? Um, so we um, basically have to warn it, uh, hold two public hearings, and then the vote. Oh. And then from there it goes to the legislature for approval. So is there time to do that this year? It, uh, there is still time to get it done before um march yeah. yeah um biggest question i have is you know if, if it you know whatever provisions get approved um you know it's going to be the middle of march by the time it gets to the legislature well, are are they going to uh, in my opinion most of these are non-controversial so um i wouldn't think it would be a huge lift, but if there's a lot that comes through the government operations committee, you know, are, are they just going to have the time to look at this biannual, or is it going to have to get pushed back to next year? So, would we put a proposal in pending? I'm just, wondering, I'm just thinking from the legislative process, would we put something in pending the vote? Because usually they have to, things have to be in. It would go in. Charter, charter stuff works. Usually they have to have it in a certain time before, they're, before they can take a look at it. And I'm not sure, usually, because, you know, they have the crossover where all the right. up. So right. does that apply to this, I'm wondering? I don't believe it does, okay. but it, it's, it's very close to the crossover day. Usually but the crossover is before town meeting, actually. I think, I think it was right after town Is it right meeting. after? Yeah, okay. but <laughs> there's a lot that has to be done. And like yeah. I said, most of these are not going to be controversial. Right. I um, agree. We're, we're, you know, local options tax, they've been through so many times. The... Um, Town manager is a choice. Or town, town manager. Is a choice for the town. It's a town that's yeah that's yeah. pretty much straight for, you know forward nowadays. The property sale, like I said, that puts us in in the same yeah. as state statute. So I wouldn't anticipate a yeah. major there. But it's just a matter of how many bills they have on their wall. Yeah, exactly. You know how soon they can no, get to yeah. it. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. If not, we, you know, we'll wait. Yeah, we'll wait here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because I was looking at the debate about the town because there was an article about the debate in Hinesburg about town manager versus, I remember looking at it back when they were debating it and, and there's a good article on, online about, you know, sort of the differences and a lot of it has to do with, you know, the, the authority the select board gives to the town administrator, but it does talk about um, less, less, you know, from, from a legal perspective, legal liability perspective, it's usually town managers tend to, you know, tend to be better in, in creating less liability for the town. Um, and, you know, the, the select board still has ultimate authority. Mm -hmm. It's just that the town, you know, the town manager can act more freely. Um, but anyway, I think it's a good idea. It did say that 75% of towns over 2,500 uh, population have town managers. I think I saw that, yeah. Yeah, so I think it's a, it's a good time based on the things that are happening in town. I don't know what the difference in salary is, though. I don't know. If the. <laughs> well, um. <laughs> I mean, what the From expectations Brad would be, I guess. And I don't want to, I don't want to speak. But in my looking at it, I don't think it would be that much. Okay. And I will not fulfill that role as big time. <laughs> I will say that right now. I'm not trying to get myself a uh, promotion here, but I don't know about you, Carla. I don't know what uh, your uh. schedule is looking like for the next 20 years. <laughs> <coughs> okay, um, anything else on this? If not, uh, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make the motion to approve payable warrant 24G13 with check number 23554 to 23582 in the amount of $115,357. Payroll warrant 24-13 13 for payroll from November 14th to December 2nd, 2023, paid on December 6th, 2023. In the amount of sixty-six thousand four hundred seventy-six dollars and thirty cents. Second that. Any discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion carries. Uh, let's see here. Approval cool minutes. So there's a couple sets in here. First is from November thirteenth. Uh, which was a special meeting. I make the motion to approve the Monday, November 13th minutes with just a couple of changes on the line that is Nelson moved to exit executive session, just uh, adding motion carried. Um, it had carrier and okay. then just punctuation and I'll just pass that to tour so those can be made. Okay. Just small <coughs> changes. Anything else? Second? Oh. What's your second? Not yet. Second. You second it. Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, there's a set of the... On uh, November 20th uh, minutes which was a regular meeting. I make the motion to approve the Thursday, November 30th, 2023 minutes. Oh, no, uh, November, Monday, November 20th. Oh, I don't think so, I had that one. I have a Monday, November 20th, Do but it. yeah. written differently so okay no I wasn't there and we had a meeting on the 30th as well yeah before the abatement oh yeah oh that's why we looked at your phone and then you showed up for abatement make the motion to approve the minutes of Monday, November 20th, 2023, as presented to us this evening. 
Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. I wasn't, I wasn't there, but as written, I can approve it. Sure. Okay, motion carries. And, uh, and lastly, we do have a set for Thursday, November 30th, which was a special meeting last week. And I'll go ahead and move the Thursday, November 30th, 2023 minutes with just one change, and that's just bringing the PM, PM up on the same line as the time. That is some weird word things. You notice, um, I couldn't get that taken out. It was it was on there, like another set another to set it. Two. It um, not that, but something. There's some formatting thing I can't figure it out. Um, Sometimes, if you under bring the under the. Uh, like under right here did the oh, same sure, thing. Oh, sure, sure. Sometimes if you get your cursor right at the beginning and then you just backspace it up and then do your return again, it will fix it. Sometimes, I don't know. It's worth a it's, try. But if you can't, you can't. And I will second that. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And carries? Um, round table, Joe? I'm good. Well, I'm good as well. Thank you. Door? Uh, put in your packet uh, Friday, December 15th at 10 a.m. is the Washington County Preliminary Budget Planning Meeting at the Kellogg Hubbard Library. And what do they do there? For the, <laughs> for the county court and everything, the budget for the county court. Oh, not for so it doesn't have to do with our budgeting. Well, it does but, to um, some degree because we have to pay into it to oh, fund them. Oh. And I think that also is the Washington County Sheriff's Department in there too. Mm -hmm. I may go just because I don't know anything about the budgeting part. So very interesting yeah. process. Yeah. Okay, for me to release this. What is that? Planning Commission. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we do have a vacancy on the Planning well, Commission. Yet, but <laughs> but uh, um, I will put out a vacancy announcement to uh, solicit interest in that position. And then, if I've not depressed you all enough already, <laughs> um, I've included in your packets a very busy spreadsheet um, just a lot of things we got coming up in the next five or ten years this is um, great. Mm -hmm. you know I've been I've been harping on capital budgeting uh, for the past several months and starting to take a look ahead at what's coming up mm -hmm. um, these are some of the things and uh, Need a lot of money. Yeah. Very beneficial to have it right in front of us. That's really nice of you to put this together for us. And I think it did. Yeah, I think you're right, Tori. That's one of my big things is if we really need to start paying capital budgeting. Where are we with paying Turnpike North? What are we waiting on there? We're still waiting on a report. We study from the state. They should be getting us grant paperwork in the next couple weeks. I talked to the uh, the engineer last week. Mm -hmm. That might help with their new hotel access. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Hopefully, it's fixed within the next two years. Let's hope. Let's hope. <laughs> At least it's not as bad as uh, Fisher. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. when I had to drive around that every day, I was really irritated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carla. No, not that I can think of. Okay. Is there an executive session to Sure, why not? Um, for assistant treasurer hiring, I moved that we enter, excuse me, into executive session 
for personnel in accordance with the one VSA 313A3. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we expect to have a vote when we come out? No, we do not. Okay. We are in executive session. Mm -hmm.